Working with a recording template is something that increases my workflow, and today I want to show you how to set up a recording template. Hey, what's up everyone? The Chris here from Mixdown Online. Now, if you're new here on this channel, consider subscribing by clicking the subscribe button below and the notification bell so you don't miss anything. And don't forget to share and to like this video. All right, so now working with a recording template. Now, this is a question that someone asked me a few weeks ago on if it was possible for me to share my recording template. Now, the answer is very, very simple. It is not possible for me to share my recording template. And the reason is very simple. We don't have the same needs. We don't work with the same interface. We don't have the same amount of inputs and we don't work with the same virtual instruments. And you'll understand why when I'm gonna show you my recording template. Okay, so let's jump right in Cubase and let's look at uh, the templates I work with. And yes, I said templates because I work with more than one. So there you go. So now I have four main recording templates. Now don't worry if you're not working with Cubase, you can apply this in any DAW. Most of the uh, DAWs out there have a template system somehow uh, where you can load a session using a template. But in my case, I'm gonna be working with Cubase. Uh, so those are the four projects that I, that I use to create my template. So when I create a template from scratch i just start with an empty cubase project and i load all the tracks that i think i'm going to be using um, that are going to be useful to add in a template like drum tracks guitar tracks acoustic guitar tracks vocal tracks and so on and even some virtual instruments on the vst sounds that i use a lot um, so let's load the full production template Okay, so this is what we have in this session. Now my session is already set up. And once I'm done with my session, my, uh, uh, my full session, I just save it as a template. I just click on file and save as template. This is gonna open up the save as template window. And this is where I'm gonna write down a, um, a new preset, a new template name, or I just replace an existing one by clicking on one of them and click on okay. And that is gonna ask me if I wanna replace that template. Uh, so this is what I do. And then the next time I'm gonna be open up a new project, I'm gonna see my template listed down here if i click on the more tab on top on the top right i'm gonna have all of my templates available right here on that window okay for now we're not going to create a new one we're still in the uh the cubase project before saving the project as a template um, so i'm just going to show you what i have here in my template uh, first i have a bunch of vst instruments that i use a lot um, so i have a drum kit Okay, I have a synth bass, an electric piano. And, and, and the cool thing uh, on this template is I have some effects that I like to use with an electric piano. And same for a piano or a Rhodes. Um, I have like, a, on this one, I have a compressor. It's like, it's fully compressed. Um, I have an Echo Boy loaded uh, as a delay. All right, and I have a reverb as well, some EQ and stuff like that. Um, and same for the Rhodes. And same for the piano. Okay, uh, so those are the type of effects that I like to use when working on a piece of music. And so everything is loaded by default. If I don't need those, I just bypass them and that's it, okay? So I have some, uh, some pads loaded as well. So those are the sounds that I use a lot. So they are loaded in my template. Then I have some drum tracks already set up to, uh, to be able to record drums right away. Um, what I have here, if I click on F4 to get the audio connections window, I have all of my inputs out of my sound interface. Uh, all the buses are loaded right here and all the, the routing is already done on my template as well, as far as the, uh, all the audio track goes. So I have my kick drum. If you look on top here, I have that set up to mono in one and then second input, the second bus input goes to the uh, kick out. 
and so on, okay? Uh, the snare goes to three and input four. Uh, mono input four is for the bottom snare and it goes on and on uh, for the drum tracks. Uh, then what I have, I have the bass um, and I have two uh, audio tracks for acoustic guitars and then some uh, two mono electric guitar tracks um, that are ready to use to record a guitar amp right away. And I have two uh, to extra electric guitar tracks, but stereo tracks, where I have a virtual guitar amp loaded that I like to use in stereo. In this case, I have Guitar Rig 5 on one uh, of uh, those tracks and VST Amp Rack on the other. So those two tracks are stereo, but the input is a mono input, okay? Because I'm only uh, recording one mono signal, which is the signal coming from the guitar itself. But that mono signal goes into a stereo track so I can use Guitar Rig as a stereo plugin. Uh, then I have an effects channel track loaded um, with a Neko Boy delay that I like to use with guitars. And all of those guitars uh, uh, is sending a signal to that delay okay um, and i also have a uh, channel set up for vocals and a playback reverb for the vocal as well and i have that channel which is a voc mon effects i call it okay that i use only to send an effect to uh to the singer the one the person singing uh, so he can monitor himself with a reverb for example this is the one that i have set up as an insert on this audio track and the fader is way down so I'm sending that effect using a Q-Mix to the singer, but the way I'm set up here in my studio is I do all of the monitoring uh, using the interface itself, so I get zero latency. So the only thing that has a bit of latency is the effects, the reverb in this case, which is no big deal to be honest, okay? But everything else has no latency because I'm not monitoring using Cubase. Uh, so this one, this track is set up for this purpose. And then I have some background vocal tracks uh, that are routed into that group track. Okay, so that's, you know, very straightforward setup. Uh, so every time I need to start a new project, I can just simply use that full production template in my case and start working. Um, I also have uh, some other templates that I like to use because you know, sometimes I just don't need to use all of those virtual instruments. So I can, in this case, just use, uh, for example, let's start a new project and open the recording template. Okay, this will load a template without the VSTIs. Okay, so I'm just going to create a new folder, call it test. And uh, there you go. I'm just going to select that folder, load up this template as a new project. And uh, you'll see that everything is going to be accessible. All the tracks uh, out of my template are going to be loaded without the virtual instruments. So there you go. So very simple. Now I'm ready to start recording. So I also have one for drums only and also have one for only the virtual instruments only. Okay, so very, very simple. Uh, so this is the way I like to work with templates. So just take the time to set up your own recording template that fits your needs so you can just speed up your workflow and start recording right away. All right, guys, so this is gonna be it for this week. I hope that was helpful. If so, like and share this video. And again, if you're new here on the channel, subscribe and click that notification bell. And again, if you have any comments or questions, please leave everything down below. All right, guys, until next time, see you.